everyone, and welcome back. So this time we're talking about 3D free by diagrams, or equilibrium equations, and statical determinancy, which is a very fun word. Words. And so let's get to it. So first off, why do we care? Um, well, look at this. We have a ball and socket joint right here. And let me switch my laser pointer because I like it better. Ball and socket joint right here. We have some journal bearings right here. Now these are often used in mechanical systems. However, we have to understand, like, well, how does this constrain my part? How does this constrain my part? What does it actually hold back? What does it allow? We need to know that so we can figure out what the loads are on these journal bearings and on the things that are being held by them. Are they strong enough? Can they actually withstand these forces? If the answer is no, well, you might want to use something different. Other things. I might wonder is, well, let's look at this. We have this very awesome awning with a very precarious looking support. And we might ask ourselves, well, what happens if we move A to D? Is that making it harder on this rope right here? Does that make this more secure or less secure? If we move A all the way to the top of the building, is it better? Is it worse? So understanding how things are built and how that changes the forces within them is very, very important. Um, small changes to designs can lead to death. So, you gotta know what you're doing. Oh, went too far, sorry. Third one, we have an oil drum right here which is being lifted by this floor crane. And it can support um, the oil drum in this particular position. But how will we figure out the largest weight that this crane could withstand? Spoiler, if the wheel right here at C pops off the ground, too big. It's going to fall over. So we would find the moment maximum weight here to make our reaction force at C equal to zero. Oh, math. That's a fun one. It's one of the things you have to really think about because most problems don't tell you what to look for. So remember that. Maybe be helpful in a homework problem. OK, so support reactions in 3D. If we look at them, we have a very few examples of 3D support reactions. First is our smooth surface report. It's just now drawn in three dimensions. And it's the exact same thing. It just gives us a reaction force that is perpendicular to the surface it's on. We have a single drill bearing, which can get rid of our moment in both the Z and the X direction, directions that are perpendicular to the axis going through the drill bearing. And also, it can resist translation in those directions as well. So this axis is allowed to rotate and to move back and forth, um, but that's it. Ball and socket, it resists force in all three directions, but does not resist any moments. And a single hinge, it resists force in all three directions, and moments about two, but not obviously around the hinge. It'd be very silly to have a hinge that can't turn. I mean, you can make it, but no one's gonna be getting that door. It's like a gag hinge. So as a general rule, which you might be able to figure out from this, if the support prevents translation in a given direction, then there's a reaction force acting in the opposite direction within the body. And if there's rotation is prevented, then a couple moment is exerted by the body to resist it. Okay, now as a note, a single bearing or a hinge can prevent rotation from providing a resistive couple moment, but in most cases, you're going to have multiple hinges or multiple um, journal bearings because that's what ne what's necessary. Um, and some of these are just there for support. They're there to help make sure that everything is easy and that there's additional support to guide this path. Like right here, technically, you know, if I'm thinking about it, this one right here could resist this moment. Um, but I have all of these to give myself extra support and to make sure that everything is taken into account. The reason you might have multiple is because maybe in one case, um, having just one bearing or one hinge would be stable. However, in another case, it might not be. Like you might have a one loading where you press down on a box and it's all fine, everything's good. If you press up on the box, perhaps that's not good. Perhaps that would make it be um, very unstable. So 
many times you have multiple um, drill bearings and multiple hinges. Okay, so we'll stop here for now, and next time we're going to jump into our equilibrium equations. So you're like, wait, we did that last time. We talked about the vector form. Next, this time we're going to talk about the scalar form of those equations, which is honestly ridiculously simple. So I'll see all of you then. Have a good day. Goodbye.